Mm -hmm. Oh, hello. <laughs> so we're on. Um, for those of you who have not or have just found us, I'm Angela Burnley, and the disembodied voice that you're going to hear is Brooke. Hello. <laughs> and you may see her at some point in time. Um, we are, um, I hope that we've got a different microphone system because we noticed last week that there was some weird noises and cutouts so hopefully this is better for you you can speak up and say yeah you sound great or no we can't hear you and we'd love to know about that welcome back we're so glad to have you back uh we hope you are safe and well and uh you know isolating as you should be but uh being as productive as you can be or not it's all up to you we know how everybody's doing it's five weeks now for us and um, yeah we're feeling it we're definitely feeling it um, I had several things I wanted to talk about the first was um, I know I hope you guys have watched number two and you saw that there was some cute little fur babies in there little helpers um, since Aggie and Sophie are such an important part of our shop life here we wanted you to share your uh, crafting and sewing life with us if it involves um, four-legged or two-legged even versions of people and helpers or, or little peoples and helpers as in animals and birds and reptiles and I don't know, small children get into it too. What? You're looking off to the side here. Oh, I'm looking off yeah. to the side. Well, you know what? Let me move that. How about that? Yeah. Hey, now I'm centered. Okay, that's good. Um, as you can tell, we're really casual here. <laughs> but if you've had a chance to look at apron number two, you maybe saw some, some of our uh, followers uh, for babies. So be sure to um, um, watch that one and get the hashtags because I can only remember one of them right now, Historic Helpers. I can't remember the other one. It's B&T something. But anyway. B&T Pet Picks. There you go. B&T Pet Picks. So hashtag, and we will find you, and we will share you, and we love it. And we love all of these hashtags, which we want to make sure that you do share. I've noticed more and more people sharing them. Um, the first one, of course, is our... Um, distance socializing which we think is a much better thing than social distancing you can certainly socialize even if you are at a distance and you can certainly sew with each other even at a distance and then of course show us your pockets show us your petticoats and show us your apron which we know you're working on now um, and be sure to tag us at Burnley and Trowbridge so with all that said I'm going to put that out of the way um, and I know that, whoa, we're, we're throwing stuff over here. Uh, I know that all of you have been um, sewing away, and I'm really excited. I've seen so many wonderful projects come out of what you're doing. Um, tons and tons of pockets. You guys really dug the pockets. I've seen so many cool pockets. You know, I've seen historic pockets. I've seen you know, do your own thing pockets. I've seen time traveling pockets. I've seen, seen cosplay pockets. I've seen embroidered pockets. So, so many different kinds of pockets, which is fantastic. And as a side note, we have our little pocket kits back in stock. So if you wanted a kit, they are on our website. Um, but you know, stash bust, you can do, use anything to make a pocket and it's loads of fun. In fact, um, what we may do next week, I know that Brooke had started an, uh, a pieced pocket. And so I think we'll try and get her to bring that in next week and show that to you. So that can be kind of your, your step up there. You can go from making a plain pocket to a pieced pocket. And you do see them in um, originals. So it's a, it's a fun project. Um, the other thing I wanted to do was give a couple of shout outs. One was to Dames Alamo because she is my go-to lady for daily wear. And I don't know if you've noticed, sure you have, that I've worn a handkerchief for every one of these. 
um, because I do wear them on a daily basis. I'm not big on wearing head wraps, which a lot of people are, but I love wearing them around my neck. Um, so you don't have to buy these just for your costuming. You can buy them for every day and they pair really well with Dame Fella Mode jewelry. So give her some love. She's in her basement all by herself right now, uh, isolating in place and making jewelry. So go find her, give her some love. Um, another person I wanted to call out is uh, Kate from Willoughby and Rose. Um, she is doing the most amazing little housewife kits. And I have to say that a lot of the fabrics look really familiar, i.e. Burnley and Trowbridge fabrics, but they're wonderful little kits. And again, it's another hand sewing project that not only gives you some time with your needle and thread, it gives you a wonderful little product when you're done. So it's something that you can use. You can put all your sewing um, tools and your threads and things in it and you can enjoy the process. So there's my shout outs for now, and I'm sure I'll think of other people as time goes on. There's so many small businesses out there. And I have to take one minute to say that you guys have been utterly amazing. I'm gonna like do the cry thing because we have gotten so many wonderful, wonderful notes of encouragement and thank you and love and all the things and it has stopped Brooke. <laughs> so you're gonna make me cry. It's meant everything to us. Um, we've been doing lots of uh, tape and cotton um, cord measuring, which is pretty labor intensive and it's added a little bit of extra stress here, but we have um, been happy to do it and happy to have you guys come and uh, find us and, and you know, buy a spool of thread, buy a pack of needles, whatever it is, we appreciate it. Uh, and we, we look forward to the time when we get to see a lot of you in person again. So without further ado, we've got aprons here and I was gonna start my apron. This was the one that we showed in our video and I was gonna start mine and I told you about this fabric. I mean, I'm in love with this, it's so pretty. And this is it washed. Um, it is a nice large check, what you might call a furniture check. Um, it is... It doesn't mean you can't wear it as a person. Right. You, yeah, you can wear it. You can be a sofa. No. Um, you, you can wear this. Um, it was designated sometimes as a furniture check in the 18th century, but I have found uh, descriptions of it being uh, worn as clothing. And I have also found uh, extant um, pieces in the Foundling collection where bits of these types of textiles were used for children's clothing. So they've been cycled down, uh, whether they started out as something for uh, the home or something for the person, who knows, but they ended up being a garment. So I decided I would start mine and I, I'm, I'm anxious to see what you guys do. Um, I'm sure a lot of, you know, we've seen a lot of linen orders lately, so we know a lot of you are getting some of our checked linens, etc. Yeah, there's um, several people who are saying that they, they bought some more, some, some fabric for uh, aprons, um, and they've been really impressed with uh, the quality and the shipping time. Oh. Um, lots of linen thread being yes. purchased, and uh, yeah. Ah, Georgiana has a question about whether you'll be at the Jane Austen Festival in Louisville if it's I, on. I will not. I will not. Um, I'm actually from Louisville, Kentucky, and I have gone over the years um, and visited what remains of my family there. Um, but this year I had not intended on going. Um, so, no. Dame Zala Mode may be there if they have it. Um, it will just all depend on how she feels about going and whether she feels comfortable. And if she does, she's going to be bringing some of my product with her. So Red Threaded, uh, Cindy from Red Threaded, who won't be there this year, but you need to go give her love too. 
Um, and if you can't afford a corset or stay right now, she has amazing patterns. She has busts. She has lots of things that you can look at and purchase. Yeah, I just bought the um, 1830s and 40s pattern that that's, just came out. That's right. That's a brand new pattern, and it's really lovely. So yeah. you should go check it out. And she does kit. Oh, I got so the kit too. And the kit, the, the kit, yeah, the, because and she has a really good cotille, and it comes with. The, the tape to put the boning in, and it has the boning already cut and tipped, which is great, because I hate doing that. Um, and it has the, the curved wooden busk right. in the kit, and the, so, and the grommets and the lacing. I think all I have to do is find binding for the top and bottom. I don't know where I'll find you, cotton you, binding. Oh, I don't know, maybe Burnley and Trowbridge? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, she, her kits are amazing. You know, we had um, Cindy with us, early this year before life changed um and she did a corset workshop for me and it was so much fun i want her to do all the things um i had such a blast with her and i actually had enough time and with her um wonderful patience to actually um build a corset for myself which was super amazing and literally that's a corset that the hufflepuff gown is going is being built on top of so um yeah i was i was super excited um her stuff is just top notch i mean her kits you will be so pleased her patterns you will be so pleased so check her out and i know i sound like i'm an advertisement for everybody but i am you know we're all small businesses we're all struggling so it's really important that if you are able that you go give them all some love um and I understand if you're not. I mean, I've had people that have written me that have said that they, uh, you know, they don't have any money for fabric right now. They really want to sew. And um, I had one young lady that's having a very hard time of it. And I said, go talk your mom out of one of your own bed sheets. Because uh, that'll be great. Or upcycle, you know, or recycle something that you have. Um, sorry, guys, that, that is the mailman. So. This is the sound of all of your orders leaving Burnley and Trowbridge <laughs> and going out to the world. Yes, that is right. That is the sound of all the orders going, whoops, well, I didn't do a good enough knock there. The sound of all of your things going out into the world. Um, um, Peggy Ellison says that her pocket is done. Petticoat kit ordered. So she's a bit behind, but she'll get to the apron after the petticoat. And then this has been such a soothing activity for her while she stays at home. Oh, I, I, and that, that is, that means the most, you guys. And remember, this stuff is up permanently on YouTube, including me. You may not be able to talk to me in real time, but I'm only an email away. And the thing is, is that these, all of this, the YouTube um, lives and all of the, um, so alongs are there for you whenever you are um, wanting to sew. So you've got one of those three o'clock, you've had a, 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 a bad dream, get up and do a little sewing with me. Um, it'll be fun. But um, there was something I wanted to, I, I got on a track and I've gotten off the track. But right now I'm hemming my uh, apron. What are you guys doing? Nobody's right. doing anything. <laughs> They're nearly done. One of them, someone's nearly done um, with their petticoat and their aprons coming along and a jacket that they're working on. And, wow. um, oh, Melissa wants to know who was selling the housewives again. It is Willoughby and Rose. Ah, whoop, yeah. she's right here. Willoughby, hi, Kate. <laughs> yeah, Kate, Kate just joined us. Oh, thank so. you. Hi, Kate. Uh, we're pushing your housewives there, those kits. We love them. Of course, we're a little fond of the fabric that you're using, too, but... Um, <laughs> Christina, uh -huh. who is the wonderful voice of all of our sew-alongs. Yes, uh, has, and, the, and the producer. <laughs> and has, has just finished an at-home manicure. Oh. That's what she's working on. Well, I wish you could come do that for me, Christina. <laughs> because I am no good at it. Absolutely no good at it. We've got some people cutting out aprons, finishing petticoats. Um, ah, yes, um, Larissa is stabbing her fingers with needles, trimming a B&T straw hat blank. Oh, that's fine. She's doing one of those crazy, gauzy covered hats. 
Good for her. You know, we had you guys um, asking us about um, covering hats and doing like a little sew along for making a covered hat. And that is definitely something that we can talk about doing um, because it would be fairly easy for us to put kits together for you as well. It won't be right now. We have three more sew alongs that, okay, down it goes. Hold on a minute. Too loud. This is, and I have to take a minute because Christina is our, um, produces all of our videos. She is amazing. Um, and she's also probably just cringing to hear that noise because she like makes really beautiful professional videos and we sit here in the warehouse and make noises with a bad microphone. But anyway, it's all good. Oh, we've got some people starting on their second petticoats. First ones were out of wool, second one out of um, linen. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So they're really going to town. Speaking of which, um, I am going to have, it's taken me longer than I wanted, but I should be getting a good um, stock of new linens in. I know that you guys have gone crazy for the colors, so I've got some beautiful colors coming in and a few more stripes, a couple of checks. And I wanted to bring up a point about aprons. If you can see here how lovely this is, how easy it was for me to cut without pulling a thread because I cut on the weave. So checks are great for that. Um, any of you that might be doing small checks when we get to the point where we start gathering up, it's real easy to gather up when you follow the check. Otherwise, you can you can count threads or you can just eyeball it. But um, those are the checked fabrics for aprons um, are the best. They make it the easiest. Also, kind of it rocks for men's shirts too because again, you can cut straight and you don't have to pull threads. So I'm just doing a hem stitch on mine. You can do a hem stitch or a feld stitch. You know, as you know, the difference, the minor differences is that with a felled uh, stitch, you get a straight little dot. And with a hem stitch, you get a slight little um, angle to the stitch on the right side. So I'm doing a hem stitch. Just had an update from uh, Cindy at Red Threaded that the um, curved wooden busks will be back in stock in about one week for anyone who wants the curved wooden busks. Oh, fantastic. Oh, and another thing uh, with Christina, for those of you that have been buying our boning, um, Christine, uh, not Christina. Okay, Angela. <laughs> Brooke's looking at me like I'm crazy. Um, Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. I'm sorry, Cindy. I'm thinking Christina, and I say, yeah. Cindy from Red Threaded, um, not only does she have these great curved busts that nobody else has, and I own one of them too, she also, um, with the help of Alyssa, I don't know if she did it or Alyssa did it, but anyway, they developed a bit that goes into your Dremel tool that allows you to... Um, to sand the edges of your uh, whalebone. So instead of doing it by hand, I, you know, I know uh, people cut them with uh, toenail clippers and all kinds of things, but then they always have to go back by hand with a file or a piece of sandpaper to clean them up. This little Dremel tool is amazing. I got to use the bit um, at our workshop and it was super and I have one. Um, and it'll work with really any Dremel tool. I mean, a, a full-size one probably works better, but I haven't tried it yet. I'm gonna try it with my little battery-operated one to see how it does. And it's that's um, something else that's worth having. And they're very inexpensive. And I don't know if Cindy has them in stock right now, but they're worth buying. Hmm. Other questions? There's a lot of people pulling threads for ruffles and petticoats. Um, Fantastic. Uh, Larissa said she'd like to see us do a white cap kit. Okay, so we, uh, um, it's over there. I have a box full of original caps that are part of my collection. They're all later 
but Brooke and I just had a nice little um, talk about caps, and we think we've come up with a pattern um, that we think you guys will like. It's, it's fairly plain. It, it's not going to be for those that are looking to make the big poofy caps and that sort of thing. Um, it's really just meant uh, to get your hands used to sewing something finer, like a cap. Um, and we will do that as one of the three new sew alongs that we're going to do. And that one, uh, we can do it, you know, as a kit. It's basically fabric, a little bit of thread, and a, a bit of ribbon. Um, and we will also, you know, provide you with a PDF pattern for it so that you'll be able to uh, have instant gratification. I've also got Lauren Marangola is working with me. Um, she's going to, you know, she did my pocket pattern, which was so amazing. If you saw what I drew, and then you saw what I, you got, um, worlds apart. <laughs> um, hers were, her version of it was much better than mine. Um, anyway, I had done a bed gown pattern many, many, many years ago. And she is going to grade that and um, turn it into, again, a e-pattern uh, for me. And that is going to be one of our sew-alongs as well. Um, that will have a small price tag to it because it's a little more complicated and it's going to involve a little bit more on our part. But it won't be much. And it'll be enough that, you know, we can recoup our expenses and you have the opportunity um, to make uh, an upper garment. Um, Christina is also working on um, putting together our next sew along, um, which will be a shift. So we are going to cover all the bases. We're going to get you dressed. The only thing we're not going to put you in is stays. And if you don't want to build stays, go to Red Threader. And speaking of that, we actually are having a conversation right now on the chat about um, stays and... Yep. Um, uh, Rebecca is wondering which stays to pick from Red Threaded. If she wants, she should you do the Georgian ones or the 1780s ones. It depends on what you want to interpret as you start to make, you know, more clothing. Because a bed gown, the clothes that we're making right now, your apron, uh, your apron goes throughout the 18th century. Your petticoat goes throughout the 18th century. Your pocket goes throughout the 18th century. And the bed gown that we're going to do is... A little bit, it, I wouldn't call it like a 1740s or even maybe a 50s bed gown, but the second half of the 18th century, by all means, you could use. So you have the ability to um, dress anywhere from the 70s on into the late 80s or further, if you like. So that's your choice. I have um, I have the, the uh, um, stomacher. Um, you have the 1780s the, ones. The 1780s, yeah. yeah. I think it also depends on your own shape. Um, I, I find that for some people, the 1780s ones work better. Yeah, um, for me they do. And, yes. Um, and for the, um, the Georgian ones, the Georgian ones also don't have shoulder straps. Um, and they're back lacing only, while right. the 1780s ones are front lacing. I prefer back lacing stays. Um, but other, and I lace them myself, um, and I just find they fit, fit better that way. But other people prefer stays that are front lacing. Yeah, and, and that is, um, there are uh, tricks to lacing yourself. Um, Abby um, did a little thing years ago for us, and actually for um, uh, Susan, who used to write the blog to Nerdy History Girls, um, she did a whole blog on how you can lace your back lace yourself by yourself i cannot i don't have the dexterity to do it so i really need front lacing stays i'm also more comfortable with something that has more um, um how do i want to say size range <laughs> um so i'm happier with the stomacher stays because it gives me a little bit more leniency um some people don't ever change size, so it's not an issue for them. The front lacing, I mean, the back lacing stays, what I will say about them is you get a, a smoother uh, front when you use a back lacing stay than you will get with a stomacher stay. And Aggie has just joined us. They could, they could hear 
both yeah. of them earlier. Yeah, the little clickety clack and barking, <laughs> right? Yeah, I did say we are working, you know, this is our warehouse. Yeah, all the things happen here. So noise is one of them. So does anybody have questions about aprons? Since that's what we're working on right now, or pockets or petticoats or whatever. There's definitely a lot of interest in shifts and sh chemise sew-alongs and um, both uh, Willoughby and Rose and um, Timesmith mentioned that they had been working on cap kits, but that they're happy to have you <laughs> do them so that they don't have to completely finish them all. Oh, okay. There you go. Or we well, have lots of different cap is, styles. Yeah, I mean, ours is directed at, uh, ours will be directed at the sew along, but those, the skills that you guys are learning here are skills that you can take to all different types of garments and all different versions. So I know that um, uh, Toad Hall Tea, and I, that's how she goes by on Instagram, um, is making a bibbed apron based on the one that's in the collection at Colonial Williamsburg, which is supposed to be French. Um, and so she basically tried to work out her pattern based on that uh, garment. And so that's not what we're building here, but certainly you're learning skills here that you can use to build that type of apron. Uh, the same goes for caps. We'll do our cap and you can take those skills and build all kinds of different caps and use different kits. It's all, yeah. you know, there, there are basics that go into an 18th century cap, methods of construction that are the same for anybody who builds an 18th century cap, if you're gonna build it the way it was built in the 18th century. So that would be the same throughout anybody that puts a kit together with instructions. So. There's um, been some conversation about pinner or bib aprons mm -hmm. and can the upper shape just be square, which I have seen. Yes, I've seen. Um, but why sometimes you also see the upper part being sort of almost T or V shaped. I don't know that I, I haven't done a summary where I've gone and looked at images and then categorized them like by, um, by whether or not we know what country of origin they're from or whatever to see if maybe there's a fashion trend in one um, country versus another. Um, I know the English you tend to see, I will say the English images that I've seen tend to be the square or the rectangular. And I have seen some French that have more of that T shape or the V shape. Which I um, find more flattering, but. Yeah, it is. Um, and I actually had somebody ask me, and I thought this was so much fun. I think they asked me on one of the um, tutorials, they asked, well, could I put my, could I finish off my apron and then whip the um, bib on? And then if I didn't want to use the bib, I can fold it back and you wouldn't see it, you know, fold it under. And I said, you most certainly can, because guess who did that a zillion years ago? I absolutely did. Um, I was like, wow, this would work. Now I have two different aprons, and whether they did it or not, no documentation whatsoever, but it makes sense, mm -hmm. so why not? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, there's a question about if you could clarify what the difference between an under petticoat mm -hmm. and a fashion petticoat is. Okay. So an under petticoat, typically, I think the terminology comes, you, you see the term under petticoat being used um, in the 18th century, and if you see it in affiliation <coughs> with a textile, it tends to be white linen or a dimity. Dimity is incredibly popular, which is a, um, a cotton or a linen cotton um, that's often woven um, in a woven... Um, ridge, it has a, a, a striping to it, or it can have a, a bird's eye pattern. There's various different types of dimities, but um, it's considered, uh, um, it's typically more of your underwear. So it tends to be light colored, easy to wash, what's closer to your skin, etc. And it protects the outer petticoat. So for example, if you are wearing a silk petticoat, you don't want a silk petticoat to be close to your body because then it might get dirty, it might get body oils on it, and then you have to try and clean it. Yeah. And it's not a simple thing to clean. And I tend to, my under petticoat usually is much smaller in diameter mm -hmm. um, and usually opens in the back. And I, 
I just have it pleated around towards the back opening. And I put my I put my pocket over top of it, and then right. I put my stays over top of that. Right, and you see that in our in our dressing video, you see how we do that. And in fact, uh, Samantha's wearing a quilted a Marseille quilted petticoat, which was something that was done in the weave. They wove it to uh, create this quilting, um, and you bought the fabric that way. And the quilted petticoat gave you um, it gave you form, it gave you warmth etc cetera, etc cetera. so that's why uh you sometimes see quilted petticoats um as under petticoats but typically they are made of either cotton or uh or linen um how come you choose to have your center back is it because you've seen expanse that have the center back opening i mean i guess it could be on the side but sometimes <laughs> you see ones where the pleating you know is flat in the front and goes around towards the back mm -hmm. and so if that's the case i would want it to be smooth in the front and have the opening in the back. Yeah. I mean, I guess it could be on the side, but I don't yeah. have my pocket underneath. But only one opening versus two? For for a lot of the under petticoats that I've seen, yes. Do you know if, now we're gonna have a little bit of a, of a uh, research talk here. Um, do you know if they are, <coughs> excuse me, I am really dry. Hold on one minute. I'm gonna leave the camera and go get a drink of water because I'm dying here. Are you going downstairs? <coughs> No, I can't want to go down there. Or I thought I did. I'm going to bring the water out of the iron. Is it hot? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm drinking the water out of the iron, you guys. I'm sorry. I like need to drink a water. Do you want me to get you a water bottle? No, I don't have any water bottles down there. <laughs> it's lukewarm, but it has wet my whistle, so I'm good. <laughs> It's not, uh, listen, this is casual, right, guys? This is totally casual. Um, anyway, so research-wise, the only reason I say that is because I know that sometimes I've seen petticoats in collections, and oftentimes they have had a waistband that's been put on them, and it's not original yeah. to the, the petticoat. So I don't know. You know, we're. I'm going to say that... that um, a safe petticoat is made the same way you make your fashion petticoat. Otherwise, I would look for some documentation for other methods of making it. All right, we've got a question about, I can't scroll up to it. Ah, um, a question about the elegant upper class dress aprons. Mm -hmm. Were the styles of the gowns, were they particularly worn with or not with? They're curious about the 1770s and 80s. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. think you'd wear an apron with... A sock. Uh, you could. Not in the 70s and 80s, probably, because no. by the 70s and 80s, sacks That's... are really just for really oh. dressed up. Right. Earlier in the century, yes, you could wear an apron with the sack. When I, when I used to do that, I would have to tie it through the pocket slits, though. Right. Um, but for the 70s and 80s, I think with, with any kind of, like, nightgown or... English gown, Italian gown. You see them with jackets. Yeah. Um, if, you know, French flash, blah, 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 French, French, easy for me to say, French fashion plates are something that comes to mind, you know, really quickly because they, um, there's a lot of them when you get into the 70s and early 80s that show these aprons. <clears throat> and they're being worn with the you see them being worn with short sacks and petticoats uh you see them being worn with pen and layers and uh, i mean excuse me not pet and layers polonaise and petticoats um what else center front clothing gowns so and a lot with jackets a lot with jackets you see and you also see um in the, I think it's like 70s, it might be early 80s, you see um, these short aprons, these really short aprons, mm -hmm. they're heavily embroidered, and they're, they're strictly a fashion statement, there's nothing practical about them, so. Um, there's a question about any tricks to rolling the hem evenly as you go instead of pinning before starting, because um, you didn't baste yours, did you? No, I didn't. Oh, Christina is not going to be happy with you. Mm -hmm. I sort of didn't do my homework. 
I didn't do my homework, but I'm cheating again because I have this amazing Czech linen that is lightweight and finger presses really well. And I'm able to do my little hem and I can just match up all my lines and it's nice and even. But I'm not rolling my hem, I am turning my hem. And <clears throat> I probably have, let's see what it ends up measuring. Yeah, I have a quarter inch seam here or a quarter inch hem. It can be as small as an eighth of an inch hem um, if you so desire. I don't so desire because I don't have, yeah, I don't so desire because it's easier for me to do this quarter for just an everyday um, apron. But you can do a tiny little eighth inch hem. It all depends on your fabric too. Some, some, um, some fabric will give you uh, a, a make it easier for you to make a tiny hem than others. And Brooke is over here doing something I don't know what. Well, Brooke right now is working on our cotton muslin, and you were ask you guys were asking about dressy apron. Mm -hmm. And um, someone was asking about what fabric would be good for a right. dressy apron. Our our cotton muslin is lovely for that. It's really lightweight. It's very sheer. Um, it is great for rolling a hem if you want to roll, especially if you're going to do ruffles, which which uh, Brooke is going to do on this particular apron. Um, if you're going to do ruffles, you do want to do a rolled hem on it. Um, one of the things that's really interesting besides rolled hems are tiny little flat hems. And it's something that you see a lot in handkerchiefs. You will see teeny teeny tiny, I mean literally, um, I would not say an eighth, I would say a sixteenth of an inch hem. So they take this very fine cotton muslin and they flat turn it. So they're not rolling it, they're flat turning it, and then they're doing a running stitch. Um, so that's another option of something that you can do for your uh, ruffles versus a rolled hem. And it's not wrong at all. So you want me to roll the hem on this one that I'm doing? On the ruffles. Oh, the ruffles, but not yeah. on. The, but what about the hem itself? No. Oh, okay. Well, then you I won't. Just do a small flat hem. Yeah. Um, someone had a question about whether the linen you're using would be good for a modern sleeveless dress. Oh, absolutely. It is lightweight. Um, okay. Can you see me? <laughs> it's a little bit see-through. Um. Hmm. I don't know. I don't see anything through it, do you? No, I can't no, see anything. I think you'd be all right. I mean, it's real lightweight, but it's a fine yarn. It's it's pretty linen. If you're not real positive, you know, if you if you have a project, we don't mind you um, asking us for just a sample of one fabric. Shoot us an email with your mailing address, and we'll get it into the mail to you as soon as we can. Um, so if, if you definitely want a linen, but you're a little bit on the fence about the weight of it or something, um, let us send you a sample. We hate for you to buy something and then be disappointed. Um, there was a question about uh, whether you would use cotton or linen tape to tie a fine apron. Um, they're still using linen uh, for, for woven tapes but you can use cotton. You know, we have our plain weave cotton, which we started carrying because quite truthfully, we have a linen tape manufacturer and they lost the ability to bleach their linen. Now, if you go to, again, to our YouTube channel, we do give you a way of bleaching the linen if you would like to go through that process. And there's other things you can use. People have talked about um, doing it with Oxy and various other ways to bleach it. You're not going to get pure white. You're not going to get what we call in the modern textile industry, optic white. You'll get a light cream color. Um, so you can bleach our linen if you want to do that. Otherwise, you can buy our cotton plain weave um, for a cotton apron. But in the 18th century, it would have been linen. Uh, there's been some discussion about samples, getting samples of different fabrics, and um, Toad Hall T, or Scarlet, mm -hmm. says she never gets samples, but she's also never been disappointed with a B&T order. We curate the best stuff. 
Oh, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. How are you coming along with that bibbed apron of here? She's not responding. Well, you have to give her a second to type. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Takes a I, want, I want people to just talk to me. Well, then you have to do a Zoom. Well, we have Zoom now, so we may be doing something with Zoom. Um, I'll let you guys know. Oh, uh, Scarlett says the bib is hemmed. Yay. Good. Making good progress. Um, I think there's some more questions back up here that I missed. If I haven't, we haven't gotten to your question, just remind us what it was if I've lost it in the feed. Yeah. It's kind of hard to follow the YouTube feed. But Brooke is the best. I'm not nearly as good at it. And I also noticed that when I am the, uh, the disembodied voice, I have a very loud voice compared to Brooke. So I don't like my voice. Oh, two, here's a question from Susan. Um, which do you prefer to start with hemming the sides or the bottom? I like doing the sides. I like going around. Mm -hmm. I usually do that too. The, this time I started hemming the bottom because my sides have a really good selvage. Yeah, because you're using the full width of our, our cotton. Yeah, I'm using the, what is it, 53 something something. It's our I'm regular, using this one. Yeah, it's our regular cotton mall. I don't know if they, can they see it? Mm-hmm. Okay. It's our regular cotton mull. It's our regular muslin. Um, it has a beautiful selvage, as, as you said, and it's about 45 wide, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a great width for a apron, especially a fancy apron, because you're going to do little tiny gathers and make it look lovely. Um, and so you that makes it really easy. You only have to do your bottom. Um, would you, so I don't need to hem my sides, do I? Mm -mm. Yes. Oh, excellent. Not necessary. Um, I mean, they don't, they don't do anything with selvage edges in the 18th century. Um, if it's, you know, cause they have decent selvages. All of them are like what you just saw with that mall. Um, so it's really not necessary. That's a waste of time to mess with a good selvage. Yeah. Um, Celtic Goddess 81 said that your talk at Costume College this year was so fascinating. Oh, thank you. Thank you, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, I think I mentioned last week, I, uh, <clears throat> I've been researching for a number of years and I have a, a pretty good database of, of primary research that I've used to um, do educational talks, scholarly talks. I've talked at a number of museums um, and um, symposia and I, I um, recently got awarded a uh, short-term fellowship at Winneter. So I'm gonna be doing even more textile research and that will evolve into something that will go, um, will be published. So I'm uh, excited about it, except not the writing part, because that's hard. I'm not good with writing, but I'll do it. Do you need some more water? No, okay. I'm, I'm good, my, my frog. Went away. I can heat some more up in the iron. Yeah, you can heat some more up in the iron if I need it. I just put it in the iron. It's good. It's not nasty. Um, so Rebecca was curious. Uh, this is Rebecca McCauley. She's asking about the corset, the corsets and stays, and she was wondering what's best for the uh, fashion fabric on the outside. Should it be cotton or linen? Okay. So let's go. Let's let's talk about it from a historic perspective and you find linen um, stays, you find wool stays, wool covered stays, and that seems to be something that has some um, um, American provenance to it. Uh, there tends to be some um, wool covered stays that exist here, um, especially in the New England area, and you have silk covered stays. Now, Linen stays, by far, I'm sure, were probably the most common. Um, they tended to be neutral, as in a bleached linen or a natural linen. Um, if you got into wool stays, then there seems to be, from the stance that exists, there seems to be an interest in green and blue um, worsteds. For the outer cover 
Uh, when it's silk, it's all over the board. Um, you see plain silks, you see, you see a lot with brocaded silks, um, you know, just really elaborate silks. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to remember if Cindy's still here. Trying to remember what all we saw when we were in Germany a couple of years ago for that amazing, amazing uh, corset uh, symposium that was put on by um, <coughs> the um, um, dress um, historical dress in uh, England in London um, school of historical dress. They we were able to um, look at a lot of extant. Um, stays. I think most of them tended to be silks, and I, I think a lot of them were brocaded silks. Some of them have metal, etc. But if you're looking to make your own set of stays, I would suggest that you look for a good, um, tightly woven linen. Um, you're going to need a few. You're going to need a total of four layers by the time you get done building them. If you're going to build them in an 18th century manner. Uh, for your inner layer, you're going to have two layers of uh, what would have been linen canvas or similar. Um, our medium weight linen tends to be fine compared to what we've seen in originals. Um, and um, for the outer layers, you see a variety of types of linens being used for linings. You see plain linen, you see checked linen. I've seen one striped linen, but check seems to be more popular. Um, and then you see, um, for the fashion fabric, again, you see either plain linen in a bleached or an unbleached. Um, you sometimes see color occasionally. There's a pair of stays in the Museum of Scotland that are supposed to be linen. Now, I've had conversations with the conservator um, and she says that they have not had a fiber analysis, but to I, and um, and I did look at a, some of very high resolution images. It really looks like linen, and it's red. So that's super interesting. Um, oh, the li red linen. Red linen. Aren't yeah. we getting some red linen, maybe? Um, no. Hmm. I changed my mind. Oh. You I picked something else. You changed your mind. Oh. He offered me something I liked better. Oh. Sorry. I was, I was pushing for, for red linen. Yeah. Because as you all know, I'll buy anything that's red. Right. And red linen is um, a hot tough, yeah, a really hot tough word. topic. Thank you. <laughs> a hot topic in the... Um, in the history community because there are those who swear there's no such thing as red linen and those who swear there is such thing as red linen and i will get to see those stays one day because i've talked to people and um i am going to see them and i when i do i am going to put my microscope on them and i'm going to find out what they are and i hope they are red linen because that would make me really happy um, you do see um, written documentation for some colored linens, not specifically for stays, but for example, purple frocks, um, hunting frocks being worn during the Revolutionary War are brought out. Um, so yeah, linen, colored linens can be sort of a hot topic when it comes to um, the history community, the textile community. Um, but stays, if you want to stay safe, stay with neutrals. If not, do what you want. And I know that Cindy uh, uses a nice cotton cotil on her stays, and that's great too. So um, go for it. Okay, I've got a a widget corner here. Sorry, everyone. I didn't realize that the, the battery thing had popped up on the screen. She's got enough to make it to the, the next 10 minutes, so we're good. Oh. Apologize for that. <laughs> we should be good now. You're too busy sewing, not paying attention. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> because I told you you needed to make a cotton apron. She's multitasking because I'm a taskmaster. Mas 
bleh. I cannot use my words today. I am so sorry, you guys. I think it's been a long week for us. Um, I do have to say, once again, that you guys have been amazing. And as much as we hope we've brought you um, an hour or a half an hour of peace and, and uh, enjoyment, you've brought it back to us with your comments and your excitement. I mean, it's great. Yes. We've got a great question about would we ever consider doing a tutorial on 18th century men's shirts? Um, yes, we've talked about men's stuff and what the guys would be interested in, or rather the women who sew for the guys would be interested in. Because we've discovered when we offer men's workshops that are for men, we have very low attendance. When we offer men's workshops where the women come and use the men as their customer, we have good attendance. <laughs> so, um, yes, we've talked about some men's projects. We actually had, um, it was a couple of weeks ago, I guess, we had one of our um, participants made the comment that um, their husband wanted to sew with them. Did we have anything that the guys could do? And so we've talked about that. Um, we've talked about some simple sewing projects that the fellas could do along with their wives. How many of you would like that if we came up with like a couple's project? Would that be there a are, thing? There are already people saying they would love men's tutorials so that there's men who sew. We need more costuming men. <laughs> yeah, we do need more costuming men. That is true. But how would you like like a costal, uh, a, ugh, a couple's sew along? How do, does that appeal or, to anybody? Sharon says yes okay. from Todd. <laughs> <laughs> or even, you know, it would be, here's the man's project, here's the lady's project. And, of course, you can follow along with one or the other. Or you can do each other's, you know, who cares? Would that be fine? Yeah, I mean, or people can just do whichever one of the parts that they want to do. They don't, yeah. you know, you don't have to be in a couple. Right, we don't have to be gender specific either. So. Nope, that's, that's already been said as well. So, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah cause I've had a couple of people uh, that have made comments about wanting to make men's shirts for women. Mm -hmm. And you make a man's shirt, you make it to fit you. I have a I question mean, though. If it's a couple sew along, will Jim be up here sewing too? Actually, you guys need to know that Jim Burnley is a much better sewer than I am. Um, he is far neater, does much prettier work. If I think about it, I'll go find some of his work and bring it in and hold it up up close and personal. He's, his, his stitching is, uh, makes me embarrassed. Um, there's also some request for small projects for children to sew. Um, I know some of you have uh, bought pocket kits for your children to sew um, and certainly you know what when all of this is over and I can see my grandkids again my granddaughter was learning how to sew hand sew and we were having the best time I made a little embroidery project for us and uh, for her and she was learning how to embroider so maybe we can do something fun like that uh, where it can be um, Isla or Isla and Cora and I, and we'll sew together. Or Addison, if Addison uh, is able to get here from Georgia. Or Neil could bring Edith by, because yeah. Edith is learning to sew, and she's yeah. only four. Yeah, she's actually learned how to um, thread a needle. A uh, pin cushion for kids would be great, or pinball sets for kids. I know That's there's a, a lot of people. Idea. Yeah, And there are a lot of people who do really great pinball and pincushion sets already out there. Kits, yeah. Yeah, the kits, yeah. yeah. Um, Heidi has a question about the headscarves and if we can do a tutorial on tying headscarves. We just have been, uh, Christina, are you still here? If Christina is still here, um, she is gonna be working on a tutorial for us. And um, if you don't, if you guys are on Instagram, um, Go check out um, uh, Festive Attire, A-T-Y-R-E, Festive Attire. She just did the greatest post using one of our handkerchiefs with eight different styles of tying it. It is so rocking. Um, I would love it if she would do a tutorial. Um, but yeah, we are going to do a headscarf tutorial. And we've also, in fact, I've got a meeting this weekend 
uh, with Cheney McKnight. Um, she is probably going to um, collaborate with us and do some headscarf tying as well. So we'll have something up there for you guys soon. This is like a really big hem. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. Yeah, and my hem's like way smaller than I want it to be. I'm the one that usually does teeny tiny stitching and you're the one. I know. Goes, like, why do you stitch that so good you don't need to? Uh, yes, so there was a question about which um, fabric would be good for a men's shirt, the our soft white shirt shift, yep. or the soft white medium weight. And okay, it all depends on how hard he is on his shifts. <laughs> I mean, on his shirt. His shifts, if he wants or, to. Or she, because you could also use yeah. like yeah, a rub for she. riding shirt. <clears throat> um, if it's a riding shirt, I tend to really love either my shirt shift or my cambric. If it's a man's shirt and it's for a man or a woman who is hard on her shirts, then I would go with the medium weight. But our standard shirt shift linen is a lightweight linen that's serviceable. Um, it's not see-through, but it's kind of semi-sheer, I guess you could say. <clears throat> Um, let's see, uh, sorry. Oh, what is the next tutorial? The next, if it goes well and we can get it done, will be our, um, shift tutorial. And when would that start? Um, it may not, oh, now you're getting me, guy down there on my calendar. Christina, are you still there? No, she's not. Oh, poo. Well, um, she's probably giving herself a pedicure. She's probably giving herself a pedicure. That's right. Um, the, um, that one has to be filmed. So she's uh, in the process of filming it right now. Again, we're having a little bit of awkwardness. You know, it used to be we would have filming days. That's hard to do now um, because we don't have Christina because we're all isolating. Um, so we have to do everything long distance. And so she is doing some filming. And we're hoping, I believe it's supposed to come out in May. But she's going to be doing a couple little things in between um, that'll be out in the, you know, before April is over with. That'll give you all a chance to finish up your aprons and make another pocket and finish your ap uh, petticoats. Mm -hmm. Practice your stitches. Yeah. And we'll be back next Friday, same time, same place. Right. Um, and we can chat more about aprons and other projects. And Yep, next week, um, Brooke will bring her cotton one that she's working on. And she can show you that and talk to you a little bit about uh, ruffles. and All you know, the gathering I have gathering to do. do yeah. Whipped gathers, <laughs> yeah. stroked gathers. Yeah, so she's, she's going to do all of that. And uh, we also will be putting the last one up this Monday. So part three will go up this Monday at 10 o'clock for the apron. Um, and then you'll be working on the top of your apron. Um, again, for those of you, you know, that if you have questions, you can ask them on our YouTube channel, uh, shoot us an email, whatever, ask them here next week. Um, <clears throat> we love, visiting with you guys. Um, this has been great. And I love the fact that I sit down here and sew a little because, wow, nighttime, you know, I'm beat and uh, I don't get a lot of time to sew. Um, also, Res Reddit has, starting a little, has started a little sewing group that she does on Wednesday evenings. I think it's at five o'clock our time, isn't it? Do you remember? I think it's five o'clock our time. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when we're Eastern Daylight uh, Savings Time. And um, she does that with Zoom. And you can find it on her Instagram. She'll announce it and give you a Zoom um, meeting number. And um, that's a lot of fun. So you can get together and sew with friends and get to meet people and see people's faces that go with the names that you've seen all these years on uh, social media and never got to meet. So gosh, guys, I hope that you are um, staying safe. I hope you're staying sane. 
I know it's hard for some of you. And remember what I said in respects to these projects. If you got access to the internet, you can do this project. You don't have to have what we have here. We're certainly thankful for all of you that patronize us, but it's not necessary to enjoy the process. You know, get out that old dish towel and make a pocket out of it. <laughs> um, get out the, you know, whatever. Have fun with it. You know, some people have upcycled some really cool things. I've gotten a kick out of all that everyone has shared. And I hope that you'll continue to share with us um, because we love it. And we love seeing that you are enjoying it because um, that's what it's all about. Sewing should be fun and it should be relaxing and it should be a way of um, <clears throat> calming our minds and keeping our hands busy with something useful. <clears throat> so do we have any more questions before my battery dies? <laughs> I think we're pretty much at the end of our hour. Are we? Yes. Okay. Boy, I am really good at talking for an hour. That's kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, as always, we hope you will stay safe, stay well, and keep sewing. Bye for now. <laughs>